Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research. We are over in Tinkercad and we are in our circuits learning about how to make some circuits that you can then wire up at home. And we have a lot that we've already done. We've done a motion activated circuit where if we put a hand across this motion activator, the LED will light up. We have a simple just turn on an LED circuit. We've got a video to show you how to make this fun paint box LED that will change colors. And we've also checked out how capacitors are kind of like batteries with this fading LED circuit. And today we're actually going to use a new type of chip that uses a 555 timer. It's a chip that you would maybe find in some of those kits that you buy online. And we're gonna show you some cool things that you can do with these 555 timers. Make sure you're over in Tinkercad and in the circuits area. And we are gonna do a blinking LED with a 555. So that's what I'm going to call it. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not done so already so you don't miss any of the fun and you can support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull that breadboard out. If you haven't played with a breadboard at all, I encourage you to go check out some of those other videos I just mentioned, because we talk about how all of these ones with the green circles going up and down these five holes, each vertical row, row, row is um, connected. And then up here, these are the power rails where it's all the way across horizontally is connected. And that means if I put something in this slot of 12 and this slot of 12, it's kind of like I soldered them together, which is why I love these um, Tinkercad circuits and breadboard circuits so much. So we've got our um, little breadboard out. We're gonna take our nine volt battery. I'm gonna just make this look a little prettier by rotating my nine volt battery. And that rotate button is in this upper left hand corner, right up here next to the trash can. And I'm gonna rotate it. And then I can move it right on next to my breadboard. All right, I'm gonna connect the positive one into positive and the negative into the negative. And like usual, I'm gonna color my negative black. And you can click on the, red, uh, the green one and color it red so that we know which one is hot and which one is not. All right, so I talked about how we're gonna add this 555 timer and you can go into your search box to find a component and you can take your 555 timer out. Now, if I put the 555 timer up here, you'll notice that that connects this leg with this leg. And here, this is the power leg with the ground. I don't wanna do that. That automatically connects them. That's why our breadboards have this little part that goes right here where it doesn't connect anything there. So you really wanna move your 555 chip across this gap. And that allows us to have um, everything the way that we would like it to be so that these guys up and down vertically are not connected. All right, so now we need to add some things into our circuit. The first one is going to be power, and you can imagine we hook that into some power for ourselves. So I can do that pretty easily. I'm actually gonna come up all the way onto this part of it and connect it there so I don't have all of these guys filled in, and if I need to put a part there, I can. This one is the ground, and the way that I can make that look nice is I could actually connect this ground here to this ground rail there. I'm gonna to wanna to make it black so we don't get confused. And now I can do the same thing on this side. I can connect my ground into ground because this guy's connected here, which is connected here, which is the ground of my battery. Now I'm gonna take the output to light up an LED. So here is our output and I can take that and I can attach it to a resistor. Now when the resistor comes out, it comes out like this, I want it to go horizontally instead of vertically. I can come over here and rotate it some. And then let's make sure I want the third pin, row 14. All right, yeah, right there. All right, so that is going to be what turns my little LED on and off. And that output is gonna be either high or low. I want it to go into the anode of the LED. So I can turn my LED around and plug it in just like that. So now I have going to the output through a resistor, which protects my LED, and then my LED does need to get connected to ground. So I will connect that to ground. I think I'll just connect it here, and then I'll connect this one to ground. So that will connect it to ground for me right there. 
All right, so what is next? We have a reset button, and that reset button should get connected to our high voltage. If I wanna make that pretty easy to do, I can do the same thing that I did here with the negative, and that is I can connect these two guys. I'm gonna color it red, because we don't wanna get confused. And then I can connect my reset button right here into red, just like that. This pin here, which is the discharge, I am gonna connect through a resistor right into my power, just like that. And then there's two pins here. One is called the threshold and one is called the trigger. You can see what each pin does by just sort of hovering over it. I wanna connect my threshold with my trigger. So I'm gonna make, oops, I'm gonna make a little tiny wire that comes out here. You could really throw it straight across that 555. It just looks a little nicer if we don't. So I like to try to bring these guys right where they need to go. And I'm gonna color this a different color than red. I think I'm gonna just choose a random color. Turquoise seems pretty right now. I like doing this versus going straight across that timer so you can kind of see where those things are going. What helps this 555 timer flash the LED is a capacitor, that little piece that's kind of like a battery. And we're gonna hook it up right between our ground and our threshold. So if we move this down here, or our trigger, we got our ground and our trigger, and that's gonna go right between those two of them. It's nice because it drops in beautifully for us. We also need to connect our discharge with our threshold. We're gonna do that through a resistor. So I'm gonna rotate this resistor like this, and I can plop it in here, and then I can connect this up here like that, and connect it back to the threshold. I'll keep it blue so that the things going into this threshold are all blue for us. This one does not need to be this one kilo ohm, the stock one kilo ohm. We're actually gonna to wanna to change that to being much larger. That's gonna be 470 kilo ohms. And again, the way that you can change these is if you click on the item, it brings up this lovely blue menu box and you can change it in there. So now we are all ready to try this out. We can click our start simulation. And you'll notice that my LED is flashing. It's flashing really, really rapidly. And what we can do to change that rate is we can actually change the capacitance. So if we click on our capacitor right here, we're at 100 nanofarads. We could make this one microfarad, and we could look at how that changes our blink rate. And you can see that changes it fairly significantly. You can play around and see how changing some of these resistors and this capacitor change the blink rate of that. This is a great way to do the 555 timer. Now, if you're building this on your own breadboard, on this 555 timer, you'll notice there's a little dot, and there's also this little sort of half circle cutout that tells you where the pin one is. So this pin one is ground. And the way that we count is we count sort of in a circle. So one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, and eight are the pins. You need to just make sure that you orient it the right way. Because if I were to stop the simulation and flip this opposite like that, it's not going to work for me. All right, so I don't get that flashing that I had wanted. So you gotta make sure that if you're wiring it up on your own breadboard that you check where this dot is or this little circle. They're not always in white, the dots. Sometimes it's just sort of a little, it's a shiny black instead of a matte black right there. And that's one way that you can tell where your pins start. Otherwise you wouldn't know which direction to put this in. We are gonna be playing with some 555 timers in our future videos. So I hope that you check them out with us in Tinkercad. Grab yourself a kit so you can build these at home after you've tried them in Tinkercad. It's so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out at patreon.com slash Rosie Research.